Hey guys, it's Chris at Highland Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned your subscription. What I'm going to be talking about today is I'm going to be continuing with my neck through guitar build. Now in the last episode, I talked about ordering all the parts and hardware that I'm going to use on this guitar. And over the last week, some of those parts and, and components have come in. So I'm about ready to start installing stuff. But before I do, I wanted to kind of walk you through some of these components and explain what I decided to use on this guitar. Now, this isn't going to be an all-encompassing, detailed explanation of all the different types of uh, components and hardware that you can purchase for a guitar because something like that would take hours and hours of video to cover. So I think what I'll do instead is just talk about what I'm going to be using on this guitar and then maybe drop some hints about what you should consider when it comes to selecting the components for your guitar. Now most of the stuff that I've got right now has to do with the electronics. And Electronics can get really complex and detailed, involved, and confusing. So if you want more detail, if you really want to drill down into the nitty gritty about guitar electronics, I would recommend that you consider picking up a copy of Complete Guitar Wiring by Jerry Hayes. Uh, this book came out, I think it was last year, and I did a review of it after it came out, and I'll, I'll post a link up uh, above that you can click on to check out that review. And I'll also put a link down in the description for where you can purchase the book. But this book covers all the details that you could ever want with respect to guitar wiring, far more than I'll be able to cover in this video. But I do want to give you some uh, general uh, hints and ideas about selecting some of these components. And that's really what's going to determine the character and performance of your guitar. So let me bring you in closer and we'll get started. I think the easiest way to explain the components that I'm going to install in this guitar is to follow the signal chain. And it starts with the strings. I'm using Ernie Ball regular slinkies. These are 10 to 46 gauge strings. Now one thing I should mention, because I'm building guitars to sell to other people, I try to keep my component selection the same on every guitar. Now, occasionally I like to experiment and try different things and you know that makes for better YouTube videos, but I don't like to change strings every time I build a guitar with different brands because I want to be able to rule out the strings if I need to troubleshoot the tone. So if I build a guitar and the tone isn't quite what I was expecting it to be, I want to be able to know right away the, the most likely reason. Was it the magnet and the pickups? Is it the uh, potentiometers, the capacitor? But I don't want to have to worry about, well, I tried different strings, maybe that was the problem. If I keep using the same components every single time, those components can be ruled out if I'm trying to tweak or adjust or modify the tone to make it more appealing, or at least what I consider to be more appealing. Okay, so moving on, the next component are the pickups. And this guitar is going to be equipped with humbucker pickups, both in the neck and the bridge position. I purchased these from CE Distribution, and I purchased a kit for the neck and the bridge. Uh, they're basically identical, except that the bobbins have different spacing. So the neck pickup has 50 millimeter spacing, the bridge pickup has 52 millimeter spacing, but they come with all the components that you need to make the pickup, except for the coil wire. I have to purchase my coil wire separately, and I, that's, a, that's a whole different video as to who I purchased that from, so uh, I may do that at a future date. But it comes with uh, the four conductor shielded wiring, a nickel silver base plate, which is really nice. I prefer nickel silver over brass. And the bobbins, both a slug and an adjustable screw bobbin. It comes with the magnets, the spacer bars, slugs, adjustable screws. It even comes with the mounting screws for pickup rings with the springs. So it's a complete kit, has everything I need. Next up is 
we're getting into the control cavity. And the first component is going to be the pots. Now this is where things can get really complicated and can take a long time to explain. I'll keep it simple. I use Bourne's pots and I prefer for my humbucker guitars a 500K resistance value and I like logarithmic or audio taper. Now with respect to resistance, uh, you can get anywhere from you know, 25K, which is what's used in passive guitars, uh, 250K, which is common with single coil guitars, and then the 500K. And typically the uh, higher that resistance rating, the less trouble gets sent to uh, ground. So the signal will sound darker. And I prefer for my, like I said, for the humbucker guitars, the 500K. Now, I like the logarithmic as opposed to linear. The difference being linear when the shaft of the pot is all the way to zero. Let's say your knob has numbers on it like this. Um, Les Paul knob, at zero, you would have no volume. It'd be completely quiet. But as you turn it up gradually to one, two, three, it incrementally increases in volume evenly all the way up to 10, which is the full volume. With logarithmic, however, it works a little bit differently. You start out at zero, there's no volume. But as you increase it, you don't hear anything even up to about three. Then you start to hear the signal and from about four up to about seven, it increases fairly consistently. And then from seven on up to 10, there's less of a difference. It doesn't get as loud or it doesn't seem to get any louder. So why would somebody want that? Why wouldn't you want an even and consistent increase in volume or decrease when you're going the other way? It has to do with the way our ears hear sound and how our brain processes it. Some folks like to have that linear taper. Others like to have the logarithmic. I prefer logarithmic for both volume and tone. There are some people who prefer all linear, but then there are other guys who like to mix it up. They'll use logarithmic for the volume knobs and then linear for the uh, tone knobs, or they might switch it up. There's no hard and fast rule here. You just have to try it out and see which, which you prefer. And that's one of the nice things about pots is they're not terribly expensive unless you buy some of these, you know, really high end uh, pots that are out there. Um, if you're buying just uh, either Alpha CTS or Borns, they're much more affordable. So you can actually purchase a variety of different styles and different values. And then you can wire up your electronics with you know, you can take like a, a 22 gauge wire and put uh, alligator clips, solder them onto each end, and then temporarily install your pots and try them out to see which one you like. Do you like the linear taper? Do you like logarithmic? And which value gives you the sound and the volume control that you would prefer? So that's, that's the pots for you. The uh, capacitor I'm going to be using is a Sprague Orange Drop 0.047 microfarad capacitor. Now, when it comes to capacitor, there are so many different kinds out there. Not only are there different brands, but there are different materials. You've got your ceramic, uh, polypropylene, oil, and paper, and they all perform a little bit differently. And this is where people get really passionate about their choice for capacitors. And my advice, stick with a modern, high-tech manufactured capacitor. And what you should do though is try different values. Like I said, I'm using a 0.047 microfarad capacitor. With humbucker guitars, 0.022 microfarads is actually more common, but I like the way the 0.047 works. That's just my own personal opinion. Um, the capacitor values that are most common are, like I said, 0.022 microfarads and 0.047 microfarads. In between there, there's a whole range of values going from 0.22 to 0.47. There are even values below 0.22. Um, I've heard several guys uh, using 0.15, the 0.15s. And 
Those are great for if you've got a super bright guitar and you're trying to tame it, trying to warm it up a bit. So again, what you can do is purchase a whole bunch of different capacitor values and just test them out with alligator clips to see which one gives the tone that you like the most. And then you're good to go. You can solder it in and, and that's that. Um, one thing I will say though is buying capacitors, uh, you have to be careful when it comes to really high-end, supposedly vintage spec capacitors. That's a lot of marketing nonsense. Uh, the worst offender in terms of marketing is this whole um, Russian military spec. <laughs> I'm not sure I even want my Russian military spec these days, but I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, what I will say though is um, you have to be careful what people say. When, when you're looking at spending $15, $20 for a vintage capacitor, the only time I would recommend considering doing that is if you're either restoring a vintage instrument or building a clone that you want to stay period correct with. Otherwise, go with a sprig orange drop. Uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. All right, so then the next item is the uh, pickup selector switch. And then this guitar, I'm going to be using a three-way toggle. There is a plethora of three-way toggles that are out on the market. Uh, if you're trying to save some money because they can get expensive, you will be disappointed eventually. I use a Switchcraft three-way toggle switch. Always have, always will, because they are durable, reliable, and rugged. They can take a lot of abuse and keep on functioning exactly as you expect. Those cheaper brands, they can actually melt as you're installing and soldering it. The heat from your soldering iron can damage the way they work. That's how cheap they are. And nothing is more disappointing than to be up on stage performing and you go to hit the switch and there's nothing, <laughs> no sound. Uh, it's usually because of a failed uh, toggle switch, but with the Switchcraft, uh, it's a much safer bet. Also, it's important to understand when you purchase these, they typically come without a tip. And that's because there are a variety of options that you can choose from. You can get black, cream, uh, yellow, brass, chrome. There's a variety of them out there. When you shop for tips, you gotta make sure that it fits the Switchcraft switch. Uh, all those uh, no-name import brands, they might have different thread pitches that won't accept the switch tip that you're gonna use, so be aware of that. Uh, next up, the jack. And like the three-way switch, I'm using the Switchcraft mono jack for my humbucker guitars. I also use it for my single coil guitars. And for guitars that I make with uh, active electronics, I'll use the Switchcraft stereo jack. So always Switchcraft. The jack is so uh, critically important that it be durable. If you try to save money and go with a no-name, you're gonna, like the, uh, the toggle switch, you're gonna be disappointed because they can't handle the abuse. And jacks take a tremendous amount of, of abuse. Plugging and unplugging the cable wears uh, a jack out. And these are designed to withstand constant wear and tear. And they will continue to uh, perform for years down the road when the other jacks start to short out on you. So uh, don't skimp on this. You're only saving a few pennies. Get, get a quality component. And just so you know, I'm not paid by any of these brands that I use. I use them because they work. And I don't wanna tell you to use a brand unless I know it works. Um, and then of course, I've got my jack plate, which is a Gato football style jack. That's the one I'm gonna use on this guitar. Uh, I've got my Gato, uh, these are just basic strap buttons. I, I Occasionally I'll use locking strap buttons or something really fancy and expensive, but for the most part, I, I just go with the, the standard ones. My feeling is certain components like that uh, you can upgrade those. That That's really a mod type thing. And for me to keep the price of my guitars down, uh, I, I prefer just using the standard strap button, uh, knowing that the customer can swap it out to something else if they want to. It's an easy enough change. And then I'm using, these are actually Fender branded um, 
Telecaster style chrome dome knobs. And I like these, they're good, they're heavy duty. They fit the shaft and they have set screws. And that's one thing you wanna make sure you check when you're shopping for these components, like these knobs. You've gotta make sure that the hole fits the shaft that you're gonna be installing it onto. Not only in terms of the diameter, but in this case, I've got a solid shaft, so it's designed to work with the set screw. But if you're using a splined shaft, you wanna make sure that the knob has the same size hole as well as the same number of splines to fit on to the knob. Those are little details that a lot of folks tend to forget, and that ends up causing you to spend more money than you expected to, as you have to purchase the correct part when you find that the one that you bought originally doesn't fit. Okay, so that's basically everything that I've got with ex uh, exception of the tuners and the bridge that's still coming and I'll probably shoot some video when those arrive to show you what I chose and how it's going to work on this guitar. Uh, so I really can't do anything else until I get the, the bridge and the tuners because I want to install those, then remove them and then I'm going to begin applying the finish. So I hope you found this video to be useful and, and maybe thought provoking. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Uh, either I or somebody in the community will chime in and, and offer an, uh, an answer. And uh, as always, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you enjoyed this video and that I've earned your subscription. Click that subscribe button. Uh, and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, be sure to check out my little merch shelf down below for t-shirts, guitar plans, tool plans, or head over to eGuitar Plans and you can purchase the same stuff there as well. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for the next episode. <laughs>